Hello all of you beautiful people, Jules here for WhatCulture.com, and when it comes to the wasteland, mutants, raiders, robots, Gary, and many, many more want you dead right bloody now. It's a dangerous place out there, so let's take a look at the critters that like to crunch our bones and creep us out. As I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are the 10 most deadly enemies in the Fallout franchise. Oh, and just for a little challenge, I'm not mentioning Cazadors, because I don't want to speak about them right now, I get war flashbacks every time I do. Number 10, Brahmin, Fallout 2. Okay, so hear me out on this one, because you know Brahmin, the two-headed cows that roam the various wastelands, well, they're not exactly the first thing you think of when it comes to deadly fallout enemies, especially when these battered bovines aren't even classed as enemies in most cases, either acting as pack carriers or just farm animals. Yet beneath their calm cow exterior is an absolute moodera that is so deadly that you'll likely never survive their onslaught. Now, to be clear, I'm actually referring to a single instance of cattle killers that you can find in Fallout 2 as a random encounter. Here the Chosen One is beset by Brahmins who walk slowly towards them, and it's a rather odd sight for sure, but before you can even ask why the hell are all these Brahmin out here alone, boom, you're dead. What? Well, it turns out that these are deadly, exploding Brahmin that will kill you in one hit if they so much as touch you. Truly, these are Brahmin that have some real beef with the player. Number 9. Frank Horrigan, Fallout 2. If there is one thing that most Fallout players would never ever, ever, ever want to experience it's a super mutant with access to power armor. And thankfully, while that isn't actually the case as it stands in the Fallout universe, with Fallout 2's final boss Frank Horrigan, this large lad certainly came bloody close. Acting as the final challenge to the Chosen One, Black Isle Studios made sure to give Frank Horrigan all they could to make him an utter ball ache to battle. From simple things like maxing out all of his stats mean that he is quite literally the perfect warrior, to having him get the bloody jump on you and unleashing a few rounds of his unique plasma gun, it was a tough ride, but these pale in comparison to the goddamn robot turrets that he has next to him. Seriously, if you've not found a way to either deactivate these turrets or turn them against Frank, you're as good as dead. In fact, it's very much advised that you do this and bring EC Company with you and have a full party of other members because you're going to need each and every single shred of help you can if you're going to survive this onslaught. Good luck. Number 8. Mythic Deathclaw Fallout 4 so everybody knows about Deathclaws, right? They're big, they're scary, and for some reason in Fallout Tactics Brotherhood of Steel, they're hairy, but then again, Brotherhood of Steel gets a lot of Fallout lore wrong. However, one thing that is constant throughout all iterations is that these Jackson Chameleons can absolutely batter you like your Scottish cuisine. It all revolves around their ability to bypass armor with their attacks, meaning that no matter how many layers of tinfoil you wrap yourself in, Deathclaws are like the iceberg to your Titanic. Adding to the terror is the myriad of Deathclaw variants that you can come across, each more terrifying than the last. Named Deathclaws, Alpha Deathclaws, Albino, Glowing, even Quantum Deathclaws, and yet all of them pale in comparison to the one and only Mythic Deathclaw. This absolute unit rocks the highest damage resistance of all Deathclaws, hits like a rocket-powered bus, and has incredible perception, meaning that if you've spotted them, then they most definitely have spotted you. However, the thing that makes these beasts truly deadly is that while they're meant to start spawning, when the player reaches level 91, they can actually start spawning randomly from level 75 onwards. And when you consider that the battle is absolutely rough for late game players as is, this is just plain embarrassing when you're 15 levels lower. Number 7. Wanamingos Fallout 2 the Wanamingo is a truly strange beast indeed, and when you consider the cavalcade of creepy critters in the Fallout universe, that is a rather large boast. It's actually one that's earned though by looking at its composition, because it's truly hard to make out just what the hell this thing even is. Wielding long tentacle-like arms, a long smooth head, and rows of razor-sharp teeth, the Wanamingos are often referred to as aliens by the locals, and it's easy to see why. It may also be why the creature is named Wanamingo, as this settlement in Minnesota cannot trace its name origin in any history book. Literally nobody can explain where the name came from, and it's likely that nobody could explain what the Wanamingo in Fallout was originally mutated from. To be honest with you though, you'll not likely be thinking about any of these quaint naming conventions for long when fighting these beasts because they can easily overwhelm the player with large numbers and even larger melee damage output. The fact that they pop up so early on in the game presents something of a roadblock to new players, and you'll likely die over and over thanks to the random combat in this game. Trust me, it's gonna happen a lot. Number 6. Wendigo Colossus Fallout 76 
When you consider the irradiated dump that was Fallout 76's launch, then is it any wonder that strange and mutated horrors have been cropping up in the servers over the past few years? And no, I'm not talking about the oddballs that chose to pay for Fallout first. I'm speaking, of course, about the Mothman, the Scorch Beast Queen, and thanks to the Wastelanders update, the Wendigo Colossus. Is, 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 is. This absolute horror possesses three heads each more ugly than the last, and each spitting out some rather disgusting damage in the form of corrosive and poison goop, as well as having an effect that can make you panic and run away. I hope you weren't attached to that armor because this is going to chew right through it with that corrosive damage. Plus, the poisonous sludge pools in the area that you're fighting in mean that you can accidentally cause further damage to yourself as you try to dodge through it. And you'll need to be quick on your toes as this boss is relentless, swiping and spitting at you constantly. If that wasn't bad enough, the Wendigo Colossus also spawns with some regular Wendigo as backup, meaning that you'll likely be overwhelmed as soon as the fight begins. If you're with a party of pals, then this can even the odds somewhat, but if not, well, be prepared to watch your vault dweller run and cower before having their can opened by these ugly b****** again and again. Number 5. Super Mutant Overlord Fallout 3 now, while you might be raising an eyebrow at seeing the Super Mutant Overlord on this list over, say, a Super Mutant Behemoth, there are actually a few key factors that make this less visually intimidating enemy surprisingly much more deadly than its oafish big brother. For a start, the Super Mutant Overlord can spawn in with weapons that are purpose-built to make your life a living nightmare. In fact, so deadly are the laser gatling gun or trial laser that it can appear with that the aforementioned living nightmare is actually destined to be a short one, especially when the bastard will also throw frag grenades at you. Secondly, while taking on a single super mutant is a tough but fairly straightforward affair, the super mutant overlord never spawns alone, usually dropping in with the support of up to four other big green bastards. Ooh. This coupled with the overlord's high health, ability to stay at the back of the fight and rinse you with deadly laser fire, and the fact that he's no slouch in close combat either means that encountering one will bring out even experienced players in a cold sweat. Number 4. Legendary Bloatfly Fallout New Vegas if you thought that Cazadors were the only embodiment of winged death in Fallout New Vegas, then think again, my friend, as the comically overpowered legendary bloatfly will turn you into a ragdoll corpse before you can even reach for that pig iron on your hip. In what must have been one of the Obsidian developers having the biggest laugh ever, the legendary bloatfly is an utter godforsaken nightmare to take down, and can be found, if you do want to take it on, in the Old World Blues DLC hanging out in the mysterious cave. This glowing monstrosity overshadows its brethren in both size and damage output, spewing goop from its abdomen that hits for 300 damage a pop and does so at an alarming rate meaning that it can actually outclass an Alpha Deathclaw in terms of raw stopping power. Plus, I really, really hope that you aren't a melee build right now, because this beast, for some reason, actually flies up higher than regular bloke flies, meaning that it can sometimes be actually impossible to hit the damn thing. Not that you'll have too long to complain about, because this foe will fell you in mere moments. Number 3. Legat Lanius while the Legion and its depraved followers might all be bending the knee and hailing Kaisar long into the night, every true Wastelander worth his irradiated salt knows that Edward Sallow is just a voice that breathes life into the might of his military force, and is hardly a challenging opponent in a one-on-one -on -one battle. No, if you're looking for the muscle that drives the Legion, then you're going to need to speak to Legat Lanius, as the man is called the Monster from the East for a bloody good reason. This man is a literal mountain, standing at 6 foot 11 in game and hits harder than the Great Bloody Depression. But more than that, he's actually pretty bloody smart. The battle has several scripted sections which will mix things up from the usual I'm just going to turn you into base elements with my bare hands method, with him dosing on healing powder, falling back and turning off hostility so that your allies don't attack him, then restoring his limb condition to 100%, and also he can't be disarmed by the player attacking his arm. This makes for easily the most challenging battle in New Vegas and reflects the tactical superiority of the man who helped bring the Legion so many key victories. Number 2. Albino Rad Scorpions Fallout 3 while the disgusting models of the bloke fly and the centaur in Fallout 3 may cause your stomach to lurch, there's an enemy out in the wasteland that is somehow even more sickening, at least when it comes to how much it can completely obliterate your health. The Albino Rad Scorpion is an enemy that is purpose-built to ruin your day, possessing a whopping health pool of between 1,500 to 2,000 hit points, and it's able to do twice as much damage as a super mutant behemoth. You know, those massive creatures that will turn you into a tent peg with one hit. Hitting with both its claws 
Claw and then its Stinger for 100 damage apiece, this will rinse your health quickly, as will the poison damage the Stinger deals, which lest we not forget also bypasses your armor completely. Oh, and despite the fact that albino people usually try to limit sun exposure wherever possible, the albino rad scorpion has a built-in healing factor that kicks in when exposed to sunlight, meaning that as you're desperately trying to dodge its ferocious attacks, your spirit is also taking a kicking because you'll be watching its health bar fill back up again. Oh, and also, they spawn in pairs. Jesus Christ, give me a break. So my advice when you see this beast? Run. Run and pray that you're fast enough. And number one, Gojira. Fallout New Vegas. So as I mentioned in a prior entry, Deathclaws are not anything to sniff at. In fact, so powerful are these leathery lizards that even their shadow might cause you to wet your vault suit. However, there is actually another lizard in the Fallout series that casts a shadow so large that it might actually appear that the sun itself has become eclipsed. Ladies and gentlemen, I present Gojira. Now, don't feel too bad if you haven't come across this towering titan of terror, because technically the only way you can find him in Fallout New Vegas is through digging through the cut content files of the game. In fact, unless you want to die very quickly and very painfully, I'd advise ever against even doing this, as this mighty monolithic beast rocks a huge 8,000 points of health and can do enough damage to easily one-shot even the most high level of players, doing around 3.2 thousand points of fire damage with its breath attack per second. This beast is clearly meant to be a riff on the almighty kaiju of the ages, Godzilla, and seems to be Obsidian's jokey way of punishing the player for killing all of those fire geckos at the beginning of the game. Thankfully for us, though, the devs must have realized how utterly demoralizing it would have been to die to this beast over and over and cut it from the final game. Phew, bullet dodge day. Eh? And there we go, my friends. Those were the 10 most deadly enemies in the Fallout franchise. I hope that you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. As always, I've been Jules. You can go follow me over on Twitter at RetroJ with a zero, or you can swing by Live and Let's Dice, where I do all of my streaming. I even did a Fallout New Vegas stream where I did challenges based on what the community told me to do, and you can catch it there. Live and Let's Dice. Hope to see you over there, my friends. But before I go, I just want to say one thing. I hope that you're treating yourself well, both mentally and physically, because you deserve all the best things in life, like love, happiness, and success and do not let anything or anyone else tell you otherwise, all right? You're a massive ledge, now go and smash it like you with a legendary bloat fly. Utterly obliterate your challenges in life like that big fly b that did. As always, I've been Jules. You have been awesome. Never forget that. And I'll speak to you soon. Bye.